they're calling people to Jahannam. Then Hudayfa said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, in case I, I reach this point and there's no more Imam, there's no leader, there's no Jama'ah, what do I do? He said, I'tazil tilka al firaqa kullaha. He said, abandon all of these groups. Even if you were to bite on a branch of a tree and death comes upon you in this state, then let it be. Do not become a membership, a cardholder membership of any group in this sense. A group with names. The methodology, you have no choice. The way is the way of the Salaf. The way of the Sahaba and the Tabi'in. There is no dispute about that. And we have no reservations, nor are we afraid, nor do we you know, compromise with it. The way of the Salaf is the way. Any other way is a deviant way leading you to Jahannam. We must be upon it. The naming issue is debatable. And we can quote some scholars who say, and some scholars who say, but it's not really about the name, it's about the essence. You can carry the name. I can give you, a, I can print a business card that says, Dr. Ahmed. And you don't even know how to put a band-aid on a wound. And even if I put a doctor for you, that's not going to make you a doctor. But you can be a doctor and I fail to give you a business card that mentions doctor before your name. It doesn't undermine and it doesn't affect your validity and your credibility. Why? You're a doctor. So we want to live it. We don't want to say it. We want to live it. Tayyip. The second characteristic of the, that path, Al-Firq al naji or Ta'if al-Mansura, is they don't follow their desires and they do not entertain innovations or innovators whatsoever. Because Allah said about them, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهَهُ هَوَاهُ have you not seen, have you seen the one who's taken his desires as his God, as his object of worship, as the one who tells him what's halal and what's haram, what to do, what not to do, his own desires, have you not seen them? They have taken their desires as their God. Oh, this is a characteristic of all people of innovation. His idea, his understanding of this one hadith, he will apply it. Not the understanding of the, the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba. And what Allah wanted to describe, on the other hand, the believers, He said, and what He wanted to criticize those who don't have the qualities, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Nay, by your Lord and Master, they shall not believe. You will not believe, I will not believe until we make the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the one who decides concerning any matters which we differ about. And after his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will refer to what? His Sunnah. We will not believe until we refer to the Sunnah. Not to I think, I like, Mawlana, Shaykh, Fulan, no. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after you refer to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you don't have haraj, you don't have any discomfort, any dislike against his ruling. When he said don't do it, you don't feel discomfort, uneasy. You don't feel that way. Rather, you're totally happy. وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Like, نَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا for, we, we, for emphasis, you submit in full 100% submission to the sunnah. For you to truly be a believer, qualified for Jannah, you must refer to the Sunnah, don't hate it afterwards, and submit in total submission. So when we deliver the lecture about the hell equals garment, and about the pants being above the ankles, and we mention all the evidences concerning that, and we deliver the lecture about letting the beard grow, I'm just giving you simple things. There are many other things which may be more important, but these are the simplest things which any one of us can do. If until today, we haven't acted upon it, brother in Islam, this ayah applies to you. You shall not believe until when you refer to the sunnah and it becomes clear to you, you don't hate it and you submit. If you hated the ruling and you still shave your beard, you're not satisfied with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If your pants are still below the ankles, same thing can go. Now we need to be very careful. See how delicate this is? It's very delicate. Now we must move on. Yeah, Akhi, submit to Allah, you're going to meet him soon. We're not here for entertainment. So what, you have some facial hair that the people don't like? Who cares? With Allah, this may allow you to Jannah or throw you in Jahannam. Facial hair, facial hair, why? It's the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. And Allah negated belief 
from you until you reach this level. إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَقُولُ سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا The only statement of the true believers, not the fake ones, when they're called to Allah and His Messenger to judge between them, is they say, we hear and we obey. We're not the Jews. We're not the Jews. سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا We hear and we disobey. No. We hear and we obey. Until we obey, we're not really part of the believers in the ultimate sense. And the quality of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, al Ta'if al Mansura, wal Firq al Najah, is that their Iman is sound. They love the Sunnah, they live by the Sunnah, they teach the Sunnah, and they don't care about anyone who opposes the Sunnah. Inshallah, everyone at work will criticize you tomorrow. It does not matter to you because Allah is pleased. Radiallahu anhum wa radu an. This is the mentality. If every Muslim had this, Wallah, we will be in the best condition today. But unfortunately, it is absent. We don't all feel this way. We ask Allah to make us feel this way. But this is the fine line between guidance and deviance. وَمَن يُشَاكِقِ الرَّسُولِ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Allah further warned us, whoever opposes the messenger after the guidance has become clear, manifest, and he follows a path other than that of the believers, which were the Sahaba at the time of revelation, we will allow him to travel on this path, but we will cast him in Jahannam and what an evil abode. Allah will let the person go astray. But on the day, on the day of reckoning, Yawm al-Deen, he cannot say, oh Allah, I want Jannah, because you did not qualify to enter Jannah. Why you oppose the messenger? We need to be careful. Hadith of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu wa ardah, which was narrated by Ahmad and Abu Dawood in the Hadith of Sahih, he said, وَإِنَّهُ سَيَخْرُجُ فِي أُمَّتِي أَقْوَامٌ تَجَارَى بِهِمْ تِلْكَ الْأَهْوَى كَمَا يَتَجَارَى الْكَلَبُ بِصَاحِبِهِ لَا يَبْقَ مِنْهُ عِرْقٌ وَلَا عِرْقٌ وَمِفْصَلٌ إِلَّا دَخَلَهُ Muawiyah said in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and verily they will come up, come out they will come out from my ummah a group of people who their desires will run through them like rabies run through the one who's, who's afflicted with it you know rabies when a dog be, you know will, will have rabies or a human being it, it goes everywhere he said they, the desires will run through them like rabies run with the one who's suffering from it it will not leave عرقن, a vein مفصل, or a joint except that it will enter it. Their desires will be all over them. It will not leave a vein or a joint except that their desires are the ones that will lead them left or right, front and back. Are we among those? We need to be careful. This is not the characteristic of Ahl Sunnah. طيب. And we have the other hadith of Al Arbad ibn Sariya. When Prophet ﷺ told them, whoever lives amongst you will see a lot of difference upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa. Bite on it with your molar teeth and woe to you from introducing anything into this deen because every newly introduced matter is misguidance. All these narrations are reinforcing the same concept. But time is running so I want to move on to the next characteristic of the people, uh, uh, the ta'if al-mansura wal firq al-najiyah. They don't follow anyone blindly is there an exception? Is there an exception? Yes? Who is the exception? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You better believe we follow him blindly. We follow him blindly or not? You better follow him blindly. Because you know what it means when you don't follow him blindly? Meaning you will only do what you agree with. Blindly, meaning you don't, you don't use your brain. And you know, you may use your brain to understand what he said, but if you want to use your brain to reject what he said, then you don't need your brain anymore. You need to follow him blindly. He's the only one we follow blindly, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yaday illahi wa rasoolim, wa attaku allah, inna allah sami'un alim. And Allah Allah warned us in the beginning of Surah Al-Hujurat. O you who have believed, do not put yourself forth before Allah and his messenger. Don't go ahead before the revelation and the command and the sunnah. Don't go against the sunnah and fear Allah. Verily Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Furthermore, 
the Ibn Abbas and this, this particular narrative, there's a discussion among the ulama about the wording and the authenticity of the wording. But either way, <coughs> it, it, it exists. That Ibn Abbas said to the people, يُوشِكُ أَن تَنْزِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حِجَارَةٌ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ أَقُولُ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ وَتَقُولُونَ قَالَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ وَعُمَرٍ He said to some of the people, stones are about to fall upon you from the heavens, from the skies. I tell you, the Messenger of Allah said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, and you tell me Abu Bakr and Umar said, even though Abu Bakr and Umar are Abu Bakr and Umar, and we were commanded to follow Abu Bakr and Umar because they are from the writing of the Khulafa. Still, if they're going to say something which opposes the Messenger of Allah, you can expect stones to follow you from the sky. Because we don't give anyone over precedence. So, as much as we love Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, and wallahi, we love them. Allah is our witness. And we love Imam Shafi'i. And we love Imam Malik. And we love Imam Ahmed. And Al Uzai. And Sufyan ibn Uyayna. And Sufyan al Thawri. And Sa'id bin Musayyib. And we can name many of the ulama. Wallahi, we love them. But not more than the Messenger of Allah. And no matter how much we love them, we will never choose them over the Messenger of Allah. If they're in agreement with them, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. If one of them by mistake, and Allah will reward him for his effort, is in disagreement with the Sunnah, we will favor the Sunnah. We don't have Al-Imam Al-A'zam Abu Hanifa. We have Al-Imam Al-A'zam Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we love Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, but within limitations. Why? He's a human being. And he said, if the hadith is Sahih, then you better know this is my madhab. This is my style, my way, is the authentic narration. And you know, during his time, many authentic narrations did not reach him. Subsequently, you will find that he often takes the general principles of the Quran, and you will find among the Ahnaf, the most violations against the Sunnah are among the Hanafis. Truth, truth to be said. Not because Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, was not teaching the Sunnah, because during his time, he had limited resources. And per his resources, he conveyed. When the ilm spread, and the people collected the ahadith of Bukhari and Muslim, and Imam Ahmad was a muhaddith, Imam Shafi'i was a muhaddith, Imam Malik had the, was, was also in the science of hadith, he had the muwatta of Imam Malik, they had more knowledge of hadith, so they were closer to the sunnah in terms of the ibadat and then the usul and what have you. That's the truth. This is why you find when you, you know, when someone follows Imam Hanifa blindly, it really makes life difficult. He will stand in the salah, he doesn't want to put his foot next to yours. Even though the sunnah is that you put your ankle with his ankle. And he wants to put his arms over his, under his navel. And you try to pray next to someone like this, you can't, you can't even put your arms anywhere. It, it, it doesn't work. We just become very separated. No raising the hands. And no, total different salah. Two people pray next to each other. You think that they're from different religions. Excuse me. Different but Why? Because he, he cannot... He cannot possibly forsake Imam Abu Hanifa. Even if you saw Bukhari, the Prophet did this, he raised his hands, he moved his finger. So, no, no way, no way. Some of them, Allah, even I'm telling you, if, يعني, if they, he saw the Messenger of Allah in his dream and he told him this, he would probably wake up and say, Imam Abu Hanifa. It's a sickness among some. Wallahi, it's a sickness among some. The way of the righteous predecessors is that no matter how much we love and respect the, the, the Sahaba and the Ulama, no one will come close in status to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. طيب أهل السنة والجماعة الطائفة المنصورة والفرقة الناجية They believe firmly in Allah's names and attributes. And this aspect of the lecture requires a lecture of its own. But I will briefly give you the main distinct differences between the Ta'if al-Mansura and the deviant groups. We believe everything Allah described Himself with in the Quran. And we believe in everything Allah described Himself with through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that the Prophet Sallallahu described Allah with that through the 